The Titanic is one of the biggest ship sinking tragedies ever in history. It took place in 1912. Even after being one of the technologically excellent ships, its fate was to sink due to collision with an iceberg. So how do you think a much bigger body on the sea doesn't sink? Think about an aircraft carrier. How are these massive vessels keeping afloat on the sea? In today's video, we will find out how aircraft carriers don't sink into the sea. Before we get into the details, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our further video notifications. So let's get started. Aircraft carriers are one of the most important defensive help used in most prominent countries worldwide. These ships help to carry aircraft in them for missions where land militia force can't be used. So it is important not to let these war savers sink. How is this possible? The US America, a Kitty Hawk class aircraft carrier, was the only aircraft carrier in world history to be sunk intentionally or in a battle. It was finally destroyed in a live fire test, decommissioning in 1996. Later, the US Navy engineers came up with another aircraft carrier named Nimitz class carriers, which were built quite similarly in design and making to Kitty Hawk. It was tested to see how much it could stand against damages, which was a great success. It was bombarded with missiles from ships, aircraft, and even submarines. After all these firings, the vessel was, of course, damaged but managed to still keep floating without any damage control crew on board. Finally, on May 14, 2005, with a well-laid plan by the Navy explosive specialists, they demolished her, targeting fire at certain parts of the vessel. By these tests, it seems impossible for people from the enemy army to board the U.S. military carriers and vandalize them. This enormous American military equipment proved to be pretty hard to take down. There were many theories of how these behemoths don't sink, one of which is the most obvious one. If the attack doesn't reach the carrier, how will it even sink? It is the aircraft that these ships carry that protect them from the enemy's attack. The F-18 Super Hornet is the main striker who can fire from hundreds of miles before the enemy can reach the carriers. There are almost 50 of these on board. They can fire targets on land and in the air with tremendous speed. Link 16 are tactical data link used by the US and NATO to share information. Most NATO only has Link 11, whereas the US holds the most secure and latest data link called Link 16. It is the most simple and secure way to share information by using frequency hopping and encryption, as they are not susceptible to the other party's attempt to disrupt the flow of information. The clear flow of information among the units helps to keep safety intact. Secure Compartmentalized Information Space, commonly known as SCIF, pronounced SCIFF, quickly passes on information during real-world scenarios. With very tight security and entry, this is a top-secret space. It is a great help in processing and circulating information that could be vital for understanding upcoming strikes and terrorist attacks or any warnings that might disrupt the nation's security. Unlike the carriers, many small ships won't have a SCIF. Therefore, SCIF and protecting the carriers become very important for getting and passing on information, which can alert other vessels about upcoming attacks. All the carriers will be supplied with a good amount of defensive equipment which will help the ships to counterattack the blows from the enemies, even if all other measures fail to work. A missile is the deadliest strike a carrier could ever expect. These carriers are equipped with many Sea Sparrow or rolling airframe missiles for the counterattack that could take down the enemy's missile before they strike the craft. They also have close-in weapon system that can shoot 20 mm tungsten tip rounds, thousands of rounds per minute. The carriers CIWS, NIXIE and SLT-32 can put up a tough fight against the enemies. The E-A-18, a modified version of the F-A-18 Hornet, helps to counterattack many threats, including suppressing the enemy's radar defenses. It can pick up electromagnetic frequencies from enemy radar and pass the information about its weapon bearings and range to its base units. This is called passive countermeasures. Actively, the Growler can act independently by launching missiles at the enemy's radar. These aircraft make the carriers feel safe from missiles and ICBMs, 
pose because, without a proper radar system, even missiles are just another useless, overpriced property. Carrier ships are never alone in the sea, they always have escort ships for their protection. This combination of ships is called the Carrier Strike Group, each with three destroyers, one cruiser, a submarine, and one carrier. But these escorts may have to take off from the carrier's proximity to do other assigned tasks, but will assemble back when the carriers are in real threat or attack. The destroyers are more like bulletproof vests for the carriers during most attacks, as they are assigned to take out missiles before reaching the huge vessel. The commander's main mission during an attack will be to save as much life as possible, so pawning a destroyer to the enemy's firing is much better than a carrier having to take the direct spot. It is a tough decision for commanders, but in reality, taking down one of these destroyers will be difficult for the enemy as these are highly capable ships like the carriers. A small ship like a destroyer will have about 10 decks and hundreds of spaces, so these humongous vessels of 244 feet will have dozens of decks and thousands of spaces. A carrier needs to have these many spaces so that even if some of the spaces are damaged while in attack or flooding, the ship can continue fighting after sealing off. These spaces also help cross-flooding, whereby perfectly good spaces are intentionally flooded out. Due to this, even if large spaces are lost or flooded, the ship will never lose its capability and will not sink. The top secret and most advanced aircraft on board these carriers is the E-2D Hawkeye. They are the number one intelligence gathering assets known to be the eyes and ears of these carrier ships. The plane can coordinate the firing of all the aircraft that are already in the air with the huge radar dome on top of them. They can also assemble data from other aircraft to help the carrier with an accurate picture of the battlefield with the help of the combined engagement concept. It is almost impossible for any enemy aircraft or missiles to reach near the carriers without being noticed as the onboard sensors of Hawkey are quite good at identifying enemy missile radars, surface search radars, and other electromagnetic signals warning the vessel. Building redundancy in any warship is as important as any other functioning. Numerous electrical generators are on board these carriers, along with a port and starboard bus. Even if some of these generators or electrical buses won't function, it won't affect the working of the aircraft carriers. The main method for attacking the fire on the ship is seawater. In the fire main, the water travels in different ways, full of twists and turns, so if the loop is affected in any way, it can be isolated and the water flow can still be intact. Their speed is the most efficient way to keep the giant vessels safe from danger. Officially, they can go up to 30 knots, but in reality, they can go faster than that. They are incredibly speedy that they can outrun practically every warship on the face of the world. With this speed, it will be difficult for the enemy missiles, torpedoes, or other ships to target fire on the carriers. It doesn't mean that they can travel with the speed of a missile, but they are fast enough to dodge the aim when the weapon reaches its proximity. These are the most prominent reasons an aircraft carrier can't be sunk. Isn't it incredible that so many things and people are working together for a sole reason? What do you think about his video? Share your opinion in the comments section. Like the video and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done yet. Strike the bell to keep posted. Until then, adios.